Welcome back again. I've done some work offline on Time Barbarian and let me just run down through some of the highlights. There are some things here that I think are worth talking about. In the game HUD I did put in some different art for the fire button as I promised and I've thrown in a pause button. It's not active yet. Uh, let's take a quick look at a new script that I added called Game UI. And the reason this script exists is to give me a handle to access the UI features from outside the UI. Um, as I've described before, I like to put the entire UI in a prefab, which this is in. So this is a prefab. But if we go out back out to the game, then we need access to that. Here in the game scene, the player can link directly into the HUD elements, which are part of that sub prefab, because they've both been copied into the scene. That's fine, and that's what I've done there. But what is not in the scene here is that game manager. I made the game manager self instantiating so that I don't have to copy it into literally every scene. If it's not there, then it is going to be created automatically for, for testing, debugging purposes. So when we hit play, the game manager will be created, and here it is. And so that means I can't have pre-linked it down into the HUD because it wasn't there in the scene. So the game manager needs a way to access elements of the HUD, and that's why I like to use these singleton getters. The singleton getter technique, very easy to just throw in and um, by doing that, that gives all of the all the systems immediate access without having to be manually linked ever. Removal of the manual step is the big thing there that makes it all flow very easily. So that's why the game UI exists. That gives me access to the game over text, which is something that uh, I mentioned I needed to put in. And while I was at it, I put in the something I called label text, which is the title of the individual stage or level. Um, and at the end of a game, when you wipe out, there was a hint text mechanism that I'll be maybe putting in now. The one thing I really wanted to highlight about that was the motion of that text that, you know, the way the game over zooms in and the way the, the title slides up to the top. Um, and that was done through animation. In the old code, I did that programmatically. Uh, and it's much easier here in Unity to just use the animation. I'm going to add a piece of animation to the hint, which wasn't in the original code. And by doing that, I'll go through and show you how that's done. So I will just unhide that element here. Let's get into scene mode. So that's the hint text. Um, and let's just have it zoom in, um, maybe zoom in and drop or just zoom in. Let's just let's just have it zoom in. I've already created the hint text as a text element and I've uh, anchored it to the bottom of the screen. Let's open the animation window and that will create that will offer to create an animator for me, which I'll do. And I want an animation. Let's just call it hint. So this is a new animation. And what I want to do is let's just have it scale up. Um, that'll be on the rec transform and I want scale. So we'll say yes, I want to animate the scale property. And here on frame zero, let's take it, let's say 0 0.1, 0 0.1, 0 0.1. And then that what that will look like then as it scales up I think that's fine. Okay. Let's just mark that as non looping so that after it plays, it'll hold there. And that's all there is to it. I will then hide that item, pre hide it in the game HUD prefab. And let's go to the game HUD script and hook up the animation, which actually I think I've already done. Set hint is the public function to allow you to turn the hint on. I will activate the hint. I will grab the text that's on there and fill it in with the string that you gave me. And then if there is an animation, I will simply play animation called 
hint, which is what I just called that. Let's go and look at that again. Um, I called it hint. And so that's all that it should take. Let's try it out now. Okay, I have it hooked up uh, to call set hint on game over. So there you go. And that brings us to a whole lot of code that was really only here to handle that motion of the UI. So um, we don't need any of this. Let's see, there's one reference to it that it doesn't do anything. Um, well, we're gonna we're gonna dump it. Let's dump all of this and the code that goes with it. States. Nope, I'm not doing that. Doing that, not doing that. Hmm, was this timer used for anything? Nope. Not used. Done. Gone. Okay, look at that. Cleaned all of that junk out. The point there is that doing it through Unity's UI animation system allowed me to strip out a whole lot of code uh, and really clean up my wave handling. Let's make sure the game still works. Okay, uh, let's call it there for this video. Let's wrap that one up. Uh, I also have already set up the music player and I would like to take you through how that works. So we'll see you out there next time and we'll do music.